What the hell is Saw Sports or whatever that last call was talking about? What the hell is that? Yeah, that was a weird, from that's... Free Love, man. What's going on, Houston Texans fans? What's going on, Sauce Nation? It's Toxic City Tinny here to bring you a little flavor of the week. And, of course, we have to talk about the ingredients of the flavor. I just finished the Houston Texans versus the Rams game, and I do got to say, I feel there are five essential ingredients that goes towards making this 53-man roster a more complete roster versus the New Orleans Saints. Now, let's jump right into this and talk about the first ingredient that I think is the most important, and that's going to be Roderick Johnson. This young man right here came into the preseason wanting a job, and he came out here and proved it. He's got a great first step, really good punch with those hands, and he does his job to protect his quarterback. We've seen him protect Joe Webb, and I think more more, more than anything, you really got to take from that Lions game that he protected Deshaun Watson. So, will you join me in looking at this young man and hopefully come Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever they're done with their roster cuts, knowing that this young man is here to stay, that hopefully two to three years from now, this will be one of the greatest decisions that the Houston Texans front office has made. Because I really do think this guy is something special. I think that he can turn into something more. And that's the most important part about Roger Johnson, is he has so much upside, so much potential, that we may not even have to draft a left tackle in the future. We may not even have to trade for one. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, keep your eyes open, your ears up, because you're going to hear something about this young man, rather it be with us or somewhere else. Let's go ahead and jump into the second ingredient that I think is very important for the Houston Texans. And that is going to be Tyron Johnson. Tyron Johnson, number 13, rookie. This guy has an an amazing ability to get free from his coverage. I think with the constant issues that we can no longer trust Will Fuller or Kiki Kuti at this point, To stay healthy, I think Tyron Johnson is going to be that kind of player that moves forward and really, honestly, he can can expand this offense so much. Such a dangerous weapon, especially with the talent of what Deshaun Watson brings to the table. If you give him an open receiver that he can get to, oh, man, think about it, man. I mean, who, who else is going to be able to stop that? I mean, they already struggle with the fact that Will Fuller can get open overhead. And then you have DeAndre Hopkins' hands. Tyron Johnson adds that flair. He adds the sizzle. If anything, if you want to call him an ingredient, he is the spice. He will make your mouth burn with flavor. But it's that good kind of burn. It's the kind of burn that you don't worry about your butthole burning later. So... Like I said, keep your eyes open because I'm hoping Tyron Johnson makes this squad and can turn a lot of heads this season because I think he has the tools and he is very capable to do so. Let's move on to number three. And number three is also on the offensive side of the ball. Mr. Jarrell Adams. Man, oh man. I saw uh, Jordan Thomas play the whole game tonight. And I'll tell you something, if we cut Jordan Thomas, as much as that would suck, because I think a lot of us learn to like Jordan Thomas, he has a lot of great skill sets. But Jarrell Adams, he just has that big play ability. I mean, he comes up and he makes the play that you need when you want it. I mean, you could almost think what he what, what you want him to do, you can think that into existence. And I think Jarrell Adams is the kind of player that could do that for you. So, this is that third ingredient. That ingredient, I think, really starts to round out the flavor of the roster. I mean, you can't really pass up on a player that's going to be giving you something on the offense that you sorely need. I think the defense is in a pretty good position. I mean, back end might be a little troublesome, but why not not retool the offense? Why not make it high-powered? Why not give them the ability to go out there and change the tide of the game? Put the game in Deshaun Watson's hands and give him the weapons to do so. Even if the uh, offensive line is a little wonky, that's not a problem, especially if he has Jarrell Adams, Tyron Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, and hopefully a healthy Will Fuller to throw to. That that changes the entire landscape of how a team has to play us. Now, this will be the last offensive player that I speak about. Going to number four, I think Demaria Crockett is going to be a running back that we use since Lamar Miller went down. 
Now, I know a lot of people love Karan Higdon, and you're probably wondering why I go with Crockett over Higdon. Honestly, with the way O'Brien runs the ball, with the way he's probably going to expect Tim Kelly to call plays in the games he allows him to call plays, I think Crockett is going to give us the best bang for our buck. And that's nothing against Higdon. I like Higdon all the same, but Crockett really showed me. And I and I do have to eat a little bit of crow on Crockett. I believe that I said that I didn't think that he would be able to make the team and that he was just here to be a camp body. And honestly, that young man has turned it around. And I think he's kind of built for this kind of running style, just to hammer yourself into the hole. I think that uh, Duke Johnson is going to give us abilities through the passing game. Hopefully, if he's used correctly, Lord knows but Chin likes to de- uh, defer from what the, the plan is or how a player usually is used. Um, but as far as Crockett goes, I think he's going to be a great addition to this Houston, Texas offense. I think he punches up the middle really well. And honestly, I think the offensive line, they, they actually protect better when you're running the ball. If everyone is healthy, you know, let's use our quotation marks now. But if we are healthy, I think this offensive line will help Crockett get quite a few yards this season. Will I say a 1,000? Can't say that for sure because Lord knows we're in shambles right now. But I think this young man can bring at least five to 600 easily to us if we use him the right way and the correct way. Now, five, this is the fifth ingredient. This is that, that, that flavor. It's, it's, it punches you in the mouth. It's not spicy. It's not sweet. This is Terrell Adams, number 50, inside linebacker. I've spent the whole night sitting here wondering who is better than Terrell Adams other than Cunningham and BMAC at inside linebacker. Really, who do we have that's really going to step up in that role? We do need a third guy. I mean, honestly, we need four inside linebackers. And y'all know I absolutely hate Brian Peters. I don't understand why he would even have a job here. I don't even think he should be handling a cell phone around the players. I mean, good Lord, Brian Peters, he sucks. I'm not going to back down from that. And you can't even tell me the last time Brian Peters had a great play for us. Now, Terrell Adams was flying around the field. He looked like what you want in an inside linebacker. Who gives a fuck if he got the fucking penalty in the end zone? He was covering a slot receiver. We're talking about an inside linebacker covering the slot receiver and the best part about it all play special teams like an animal too so ladies and gentlemen of sauce nation i lay before you my five ingredients that i think will make the 53 man roster that much sweeter that much spicier and that much more flavorful and i'll catch y'all into the comment sections y'all have y'all great night perfect <laughs>